Awesome. Welcome everybody. I'm Gabby Albano. I'm the events assistant with Venture Portland. And this is going to be our final um, webinar for this, this year. So thank you for attending and thank you for um, spreading the word about these. We love giving districts educational resources to help promote all of their amazing creative events. So if at any point you see an orange cat come through, Freddie is here with me and very vocal right now. So I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, but before we hop into any new content, I would like us to all start off with a game and you might even recognize this as something that you've seen on social media before. So can you see my PowerPoint? I'm seeing thumbs up, so here we go. Today we're going to cover giveaways, contests, live streams, but before we do anything, let's find out what your new podcast would be called. So in this uh, game, basically your first letter is going to give you that first word, or sorry, the first letter of your name will give you the first word, then your birth month will give you the second word, and then your last name, first letter of your last name will give you the third word. So in the chat, feel free to drop your podcast name. Mine would be escaping alongside strangers. Escaping alongside strangers. Not quite sure what type of podcast that would be. Maybe like true crime, um, but drop in the chat what your, what your combo would be. Let's hear some podcast names. <laughs> Eating with cats, Dana, that's perfect. Quitting despite family, wow. Crying for no one. Freddie, Freddie likes that one. Celebrating despite grandmas, chatting alongside enemies. This is all, <laughs> these are all really great and catchy. I would probably check out all of these podcasts. Um, awesome. So the reason why, oh, sorry, I changed my whole thing. I apologize. Here we go preview for the next couple slides, my bad. Um, <laughs> so the reason why I started this off was because I think a lot of us might have come across something like this on Instagram already or Facebook. Um, I've taken a second to think it through whenever I come across it, whether or not I respond to the Instagram story, I do take 30 seconds to find out what my podcast name would be. So I decided to kind of take this concept and then create something that would be great for a business district association. So here's my attempt at something that could be good for the foster district. Um, unlike a podcast name, I thought it would be better to kind of create like a story. So blank was my first stop, but I had to eat at blank and finally hang out at blank. Now, I didn't take a long time to write out all the different types of colors of shirts, um, but again, that's something that could be really fun if you have a bunch of different businesses. Um, I have a colorful shirt on, so I would say Headstrong Hound is my was my first stop, but I had to eat at Matoris Bar Maven, and finally hang out at, my favorite season is probably fall, so Atlas Pizza. Anybody want to drop theirs in the chat? Just since I've been put in some creativity, might as well see what your foster adventure would be. I'll read them out if they come in, but the idea being that, you know, a lot of these social media games are something that you've come across that maybe took you 30 seconds to think about, but can easily be translated to your business district um, or your brand. Um, I've seen a lot of fun combinations where, you know, it's your store and then you can have different products or different, um, different individuals that you meet on your adventure so okay we got a couple <laughs> audrey says looks like i'm starting at headstrong hound and getting two lunches at off the griddle and atlas pizza <laughs> meanwhile dana is starting starting at foster outdoors um, and had to eat at bar carlo and then finally is hanging out at atlas pizza we all love fall great so this took me five minutes to kind of combine, think of different categories, but um, highlighted at least 
like almost 10 businesses on, on Foster. So um, games are gonna be one of the uh, easiest lifts that are going to come in a lot when we talk about engagement and algorithms and momentum. Any questions about the game? Thanks for the Foster promo. Always, Jeff. I'm very, um, it's easy to pick from all your fun businesses. So what I wanted to move into is before we put on our content creator hats, I want to think about how we consume content and reflect on how you interact with your social media feed and what actually engages you. So a lot of times we think about contests and giveaways in terms of their engagement and how many clicks they get, likes, shares, comments. But when you are on your social media page, what actually incentivizes you to leave a comment? What are the things that you find yourself gravitating towards? When you ground yourself in what your experiences are, sometimes you can get a lot more uh, tangible, concrete, uh, ideas rather than these general vague understandings of what consumers like. Similar with promotion. We often like think about social media in terms of how much is promoted to us, but are you frequently seeing new content or are you mostly consuming the things that you already follow? Um, are you being promoted things you actually like and want? Um, as a content consumer, you might find yourself getting promoted things that aren't relevant to you and relatable. So again, sponsored ads and whatnot are helpful as long as you're reaching those targeted audiences. And then finally, how do you go about researching your brands, businesses, and things when you come across them on social media? Um, according to a recent 22 statistic study, 75% of internet users use social media to research brands. So if you aren't going to Google uh, and you're just going straight to their web or their social media pages, that's where you're getting all of your, all of the brands recognition and uh, research behind them. So social media is an interesting place where we think we understand it, but then when we think about actually how we interact with it, 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 it do we fall into the same category? I often use Google rather than uh, social media. So it was funny to see 75% going to social media to get uh, research. The biggest metaphor that I like to use when it comes to algorithms and engagement is I like to think about social media as this big heavy boulder that we're pushing up a hill. Now for each post that I put on my page, I'm pushing the boulder a little bit further. The problem is, is if I stop posting, the boulder is going to roll back down to the bottom of the hill. Activations like games and giveaways and contests also move the boulder, but you're not the only one pushing it anymore. So for instance, if I'm posting on social media every single day, I'm using my stories, I'm using my uh, static posts, that boulder, that momentum is going to continue until I get sick. If I get sick and that page starts to become inactive, um, the algorithm is going to realize that there's not any new comments, there's no, not a lot of sharing going on, and it will, it will put a pause on your page. So the momentum to get the boulder to go back up the hill again, it's just going to require more effort. So oftentimes, we can't be on social media 24-7. We have other responsibilities, um, and that is one of the best reasons why online activations can kind of do this work while you're not creating content. It will push the boulder while you're offline. So thinking about that, let's go back to that social media game. So social media games, the point is to get some interaction and it's to build momentum with the algorithm. Now, I did the podcast one, but um, there are so many other types of, of interactive games that you can use on your page that will, um, that will end up getting clicks, getting responses. So trivia is a great one. If you pop up a trivia question on your Instagram page, it doesn't even necessarily have to have 
a prize. Lots of people like to just be experts and know things. So using natural competition to see if you know you have an all-star follower that's going to answer every trivia question. Um, two truths and a lie is a good one too. Um, Instagram has a button where you can add a a literal poll on your story. So, um, you know, two truths about St. John's and one lie, um, or two truths about Lent and one lie. Um, similarly, the tell a story um, example that I did for Foster, you could do that with your own business, with your own district, um, with Portland as a whole. Guess the item. Um, this is more geared to people that have specific brands. Maybe you're debuting something new. Maybe there's, this could also be like, you know, count in the jar, guess how many is in this jar item game. Um, so thinking about something that would get you to respond, get you to play, get you to enjoy um, interacting with a page that you normally wouldn't interact with. Lastly, like word puzzles and riddles are great. I've seen a couple, um, guess the emoji sentence sort of game where you use different emojis to write something out um, or jumble up the letters and have people try to solve for what your secret, you know, the name of the new business coming to your area. Um, thinking about what you want to promote within your district and then tailoring a game to fit that is going to maybe be a different approach than just posting about it, than just having an announcement, using that, uh, the inner child, just activating your own, like what gets you excited um, to play games. The benefits are of course the momentum, every, every response is gonna tell the algorithm that this the page is active and uh, people like it, but it also can teach about your district, teach about your brand. Um, it can help you find out who is the most active on your social media. Um, oftentimes we don't think about specific followers. We're trying to gen, you know, reach general followers, but having a couple all-stars and rock stars that engage with everything can be a huge benefit, especially if you want other people who can help with the momentum, especially if your brand is just starting out, you know, you, you, you want to highlight those people that are very active and, 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 and acknowledge that. Similarly, networking, you never know. You never know who's going to be commenting and responding. It could be somebody from the city. It could be somebody from Prosper Portland that just loves trivia. So um, uh, building buzz is another great uh, way to use games. So if you have an in, an in-person event coming up, think about games that could get people excited to go in person to this event. Maybe ugly an ugly sweater contest where people are drawing something, um, you know, or trivia that that gets people excited about then uh, the the trivia you have at your event. Last but not least, um, you're going to be able to stand out with games. I don't think that there's a large amount of businesses and brands and district uh, pages that have been utilizing games in a way that um, makes me really recognize them as this source of fun. But if I know that every Tuesday, um, Gateway is running a trivia game, then I might think about returning to their page on Tuesdays. So. Um, and then I said minimal effort. I don't think social media games are that minimal of an effort, but because they don't require prizes, because they don't require asking anything of other businesses, um, you can just sort of take what you have at your disposal and utilize that without having to make any big asks of other people. Any quick questions about social media games? I can't wait to see what other fun things you come up with because this is just such a short list and I know that we've all played plenty of schoolyard games that could probably, you know, aside from tag, we could probably play some version online. But the most popular of all the activations I see online, especially during the holiday season, are giveaways. And according to Tailwind Marketing Tool, um, they analyzed 60,000 Instagram posts to find out how effective raffles, contests, and giveaways were. Um, and surprisingly, 
Their findings showed that Instagram contests get 3.5 times as many likes and 64 times more comments on average than regular posts. So again, it comes back to this idea that um, algorithms weight things differently. We used to think that liking something was the best thing you could do for a brand, the best thing you could do for a business. But over time, they noticed that liking is something that we almost do without thinking. You know, I, I might just be scrolling and double clicking without really sitting and looking at the post. So they actually, a lot of algorithms have um, lessened the impact of the like. And instead they've upped the impact of these other, um, other engagement pieces. So comments, sharing, and then there are some features which allow you to save the photo. Um, all of those tell the algorithm that this is something that you wanna continually see. So my hope is that these activations move past the like and into the territory that comes with sharing, commenting, and saving. So a little tricky to read, um, but we're running a giveaway on our Venture Portland Instagram because we had some amazing uh, soaps donated to us from a company called Soaps for Good. Um, soaps for Good not only makes ethical and sustainable soaps, but they also donate a portion of each of their uh, pro or portion of their profits to specific causes such as Alzheimer research, cancer research, um, climate causes. So. This was an easy, an easy ask for us when we received the package. Um, but one thing that I think is important to look at is that I took a second, I took a picture of them in the snow. It's a little challenging to see, but um, I really wanted to clarify my rules and my expectations. Um, oftentimes, I think that with giveaways, it's a lot of a lot of information all at once, how to win, how, oh, what to do, when to, when will it be announced? And so ingesting all that text and ingesting all that information as a, as a content consumer, I don't have that kind of time. So I broke it up into many different posts, but I have a how to enter section, I have a how to win, and then I went on to put exactly what you would win and descriptions of the items. Um, I made sure to say that it was, you know, $50. The, 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 the point is that, you know, it's a free entry, but you win something that is, has a good um, price point. Um, but this is such a, this is such a, a standard giveaway example. I know that tons of you have done other giveaways. And so instead of talking too long, I just decided to break it down into best practices. Um, giveaways are great chances to promote your business, your product, your area, um, while building engagement, while pushing the boulder up the hill, um, but you must define the goal. Now, a lot of times I think this is where uh, some, uh, some activations get a little bit muddied, is that their goal isn't quite defined. Now, giveaways might just be a way to give back, in which case, no matter what your engagement level is, you've already succeeded in that goal. But if you want more followers, then I would say set your giveaway as a, as a race to get to a certain amount. So I want to reach 1,500. So we're going to be running this giveaway until we reach 1,500 followers. Um, now, maybe you find out that that's goal was way too high and that the momentum isn't there yet and you only gained 10 followers instead of 50. But by having a goal, you can track how successful something was or if it, it you know, or if there was, if it wasn't successful, what needed to happen to, to, to make it, you know, a more successful run next time. Similarly, if you want people to buy products, um, maybe, you know, your giveaway isn't is, is it, you get entered into the raffle from every purchase. I think of Shop Small, Win Big. That is a huge giveaway that is run by a nonprofit that encourages people not only to shop, but then they have these massive prizes that they're handing out. For online giveaways, if you have one super amazing package at the end, that is going to get a lot of businesses involved and you'll be able to see, you know, a little bit of increases of sales within each of the businesses, one would hope. 
but those are two different goals. So it's important to define what the goal is so that your giveaway can funnel the correct, uh, can, can, can create the correct rules so that it can give you uh, the best chance of reaching that goal. So you gotta be clear. Um, clear about what you'll win, but also how you will choose a winner. So if you've never run a giveaway before, this is probably one of the most important pieces is how you're going to track your entries. I am a big fan of just using uh, Excel or Google Sheets or some sort of data entry software that allows you to put their username. And if, for instance, you entered the SOAP giveaway and you shouted out Venture Portland and SOAPs for good, I would take your username and enter it one time in the line. And then you made another comment. I would enter your username again for a second entry. And soon your Excel spreadsheet is going to look like a chunk of entries from one user, one entry from a second user, and then you're creating a list. Then my final, the final piece of the puzzle is how do you pick your winner? In my giveaway, I clarified that I will be using a random number generator. So as I've entered all of the different entries, they get their numbers. And then at the very end, I just do a random number generator and it will tell me who uh, the winner is. This can be important if at any point people ask, how did you pick your winner? You know, you never wanna feel like there's ever a, uh, an issue when it comes to uh, you know favoritism or something like that. So being just very transparent that this is going to be completely random and here's how you're gonna do it. And likewise, contests should have very clear beginnings and ends so that any last minute entries afterwards, you know, you can say, so sorry. Um, and, uh, and specifying what counts as an entry. Now, all of those things should be thought of ahead of time, but as you run giveaways, you might realize that, mm, I forgot to put that at the very beginning. I forgot to mention that. So um, be kind to yourself, be gentle. You know, most people who, pre who are involving or interacting with your giveaway like you probably and like your products, so they'll understand. But um, just thinking about how, you know, the, the, the giveaway is is only going to run as smoothly as if as as you've thought out. So, any questions about giveaways? I know everybody here is probably an expert at these. Okay. Yes, Ulika. As always. <laughs> oh, we <Yes>. love that. <laughs> Well, one of the things that I've been noticing just right now also, and I know there might not be an answer to this all, but we've been doing a few of these and I've seen where a few, like last month, I did see a lot of engagement and people, blah, blah, blah. And then the last one we did wasn't really there wasn't a lot of interaction, et cetera. And um, I, I was really like, why did this all of a sudden drop? I mean, I'm very mm -hmm. active. I do a lot of reposting and whatever. And I'm like, what, if that happens, what could be the cause of that? Because I just don't have enough experience with that. But is it that people, I like, I'm wondering, are people getting tired of these giveaways right now? Because I've been spending, a, a lot of time on Instagram and I'm like at almost every other story every other thing is right now giveaways and even for myself I was like oh my god I'd love to win this but I'm like I'm overloaded all of a sudden with all this <laughs> you know so I'm wondering if there is such a thing as a tiredness in this right now and that's why it has gone down Sure, sure. I, I think I've seen a couple nods in the chat room of people saying, yeah, I've seen quite a few giveaways and that exhaustion. Um, you know, it, there's never a, a correct answer as to why something doesn't succeed. I think that um, you point out oversaturation, super competitive. So if you're seeing a lot of that, you know, that's a great point as district managers or as business owners to step back and ask myself, well, I know that giveaways are fun, but is there a way I can turn my contest into something that will stand out? You know, maybe even just not calling it a giveaway, calling it a raffle, um, naming 
the way that visuals work, you know, all of these things are going to influence how the consumer interacts with the feed that they're going through. So um, taking those, just, just using those observations to your benefit um, is going to help you influence whether or not it's a good time to drop a giveaway. Uh, maybe after the holiday seasons, a lot of people are going to be a lot more they're gonna be bored, you know? So that's a great time is the beginning of, or middle of January. I'm certain that people are still gonna to wanna to have something to look forward to, um, but with the holidays over, it might be, um, it might just be a better time in terms of uh, that type of activation. Um, Jeff just shared something in the chat, noticing the same things um, that, Yes, the ease of entry um, and the types of activities required makes a huge difference. That's right. So if I have to post it in my story, you know, if I'm somebody that never posts in my story on Instagram, maybe that's a big ask of, of individuals. And instead, tagging a friend or commenting is a little bit um, less, uh, I don't know, less seen from people. So you might be more uh, prone to do that. These are all really great feedbacks. And I think that sharing the your experiences with giveaways may influence other people here in the webinar. So feel free to continue to use the chat function to drop any other insights you have. I'm going to move on to a couple other things that I wanna talk about. And I'm gonna save a little bit of time to talk as a group on ways that we can um, utilize other people's creativities for our own pages. So, Let's move on to a different topic, um, live streaming. Um, live streaming is something we probably have all either tuned into, maybe you've live streamed something yourself, but I often see it missed when it comes to business activations and district activations because it's not exactly something that people are comfortable doing. But According to uh, Tailwind again, millennials are the largest group of live video consumers with 63% of us regularly viewing live video content. Um, this is awesome because obviously millennials are a huge new consumer branch. We, uh, um, you know, with the Generation Z coming up next, I'm seeing TikTok and all these reels becoming very um, important, but live streaming takes away any of the pressure to be a master editor or a master video product, like production person. Um, live streams are about re like relatable content. So um, one thing that I want to emphasize is just how much the algorithm loves live streaming. Now, I'm basing most of this off of Instagram's feedback, but uh, Facebook and Twitter and Twitch and other live streaming platforms, YouTube, they all follow the same model. When somebody goes live, your page gets promoted to the top of the feed. So for instance, if Venture Portland's Instagram went live right now on your Instagram page, the first circle you'd see is the Venture Portland one with the live logo. Now, half the time people click into the live stream because Instagram naturally sort of pushes it onto you. It gives you a little bubble and you click it and you're suddenly in the live stream before you even knew what you were entering. This is exactly what the algorithm wants. It, it, it naturally, alerts your followers that you're live streaming. So if you're at an event and you just wanna remind people that this event is going on, you can post about it in your stories and then eventually your followers will see it, but your live stream will guarantee that those people online are going to see your event is activated or is, is going on and they can pop in and then pop out and know um, immediately in real time that, that, is an, uh, that that's happening. So live streaming as a way to just alert people to what's going on is, um, is huge. But there's also so many other ways that you can make live streaming really fun um, for your business or your district. Um, live shopping extravaganzas are all the rage now. I mean, I grew up with TV. You know, you tune into the, the, the TV channel that always has something going on, selling something. That's that's what live streaming shopping can be like. If you have a sale in your store, might as well go live to talk about all your fun products and answer questions. And, and even if you can manage to, to bring in a 
a, a, a software where they can buy it immediately. Like I think Instagram has a feature where you can buy through the live stream. You might see an improvement of sales just from having a big live stream uh, sale event. But I also like Q and A's. I find that Q and A's are so relatable, especially if there's something new in your district, something coming soon. Maybe there's something controversial going on, like um, your streets are getting redone, or there's new Peabot something. You know, the Q and A live streams could be a great chance, without holding an actual meeting, to get some feedback from your from your community and from Portland. Um, behind the scenes, you know, what would it be like to be a business owner in Gateway um, or product launches and so many more other things. So live streaming is just a way to get in real time connection with people that follow you. Okay. Now here are some best practices. These are not everything, but are just a few key things that I think will help you if you choose to, to live stream. Um, like I said, it builds rapport with your followers. Um, so, and it improves engagement, but it's important to have a good Wi-Fi and internet connection to prevent lagging. I know how much we've all tuned in to something and it lags and that's the, when you click right back out. So that's a tricky one. Again, let people know you're only human. They might be more, um, they might be more understanding at that point, but your camera quality, most people would tune out of a live stream if the camera quality is too low. So considering, you know, maybe that's a, you know, you borrow a friend's nicer iPhone to run your live stream if that's an, an important element to you. And then lastly, finding good lighting in a place where you'll be heard. Um, sometimes I've seen live streams at concerts and it's like, very exciting, but I'm not going to stick around um, to, to hear the, the, the cacophony of sound. So learning, you know, what, if you want to be heard, making sure that you're, you're thinking about it as almost like a performance, an interview. Um, but if you're also just trying to show what it's like to walk down your street and have a, have a, have a day in Foster or day in, um, I keep using Foster as my example, but, um, <laughs> Needless to say, I think that live streaming is, is it's part, part of it is relatability and part of it is production. So you just have to decide if you want to look professional and product uh, and, and streamlined or if it's more about just getting to know me while I'm talking and drinking my coffee. Um, and then the run of show. So having a general plan is always a good idea. So there's not long pauses. Um, I think that, yeah, most of the live streams I stick around for, even if it's just a person talking at a camera, um, there's not like a lot of times where they're just staring off into space. Like they're interacting with me and the camera. So it feels like a conversation. Consider having visual props. You know, I, if you're somebody that is, trying to promote a product, you know, have that product handy. And then last but not least, you can use call and response action. So drop a heart in the chat or, um, you know, comment your favorite thing that you saw on our walk today, or um, tell me where to go next, you know, something that it, it takes somebody time to then type it out. Um, again, showing the algorithm that you are, you have followers that want to be engaged. So um, just pushing that boulder way up the hill together. Other questions about live streaming? I know this was a very brief rundown of it. Um, the only other piece that I would say about live streaming is that there is a there is a chance that you might be interacting with followers in real time who you you just might be prepared to handle any personality that comes into the live stream. That would be uh, my you know only caveat is just being able to use de-escalation skills if somebody comes into your chat and is trying to troll your live stream, you know, the block button and whatnot exists for a reason. So two hands. I have Sarah who has a hand. Um, yeah, I've actually never tried live streaming. I don't even really, I mean, I think I've seen it before. Is it an Instagram thing or is it a Facebook? I feel like I've seen it on Facebook. There's both, um, both have uh, live streaming capabilities. So Sarah and anybody else who would like a tutorial on how to set up a live stream, 
please email or set up, you know, with the events hub. I think that would be the best use of my skills and time is, is um, just to do it together. Uh, otherwise, you know, YouTube, <laughs> you know, how to, how to start a live stream. But most of you, if you've interacted on Instagram and managed to post a story, you could totally do the live stream. It's just a matter of clicking the right button and getting familiar with it. Okay. Anybody else have a live stream question? I do. Ulika. <laughs> Me again. Yay. Um, actually, you might have just answered that for me because I think I, I have tried it, but uh, sometimes even accidentally. Um, and it really freaked me out. Right. <laughs> um, but my question is a little bit more about is it, and because I haven't really watched a lot of them um, myself, um, which I will, but um, is it more, you know, I've seen mostly people actually like, you know, uh, filming themselves talking. And um, I guess my question is because I don't always feel comfortable with that. Sure. and I say a lot of weird things and so like I'm always like ah what if I use totally. the word or whatever um so is there something that still is powerful with it but it's not filming myself is there yeah. you know yeah these are that's a great question I think that you're not alone. I think many of us do not feel comfortable in front of the camera, um, especially if we don't have anybody to interact with. And I will tell from personal experiences, I have gone live before and there's nobody in the room and that's always very awkward. Or there's one person watching and you're like, oh gosh, uh, hi, one new friend. Um, so to that, I would say, you know, you're so good at going into businesses to build rapport that way. Um, this is going to take a little bit of a learning curve, but it's the same exact uh, skill set. You basically are using your personality, your relatability to connect with your audience, and you're not you're allowing that barrier or the gap between content creator and content consumer to close. So you're kind of um, thinking of it less as how to do this professionally and perfect and how to get more comfortable, how to um, navigate a new technology that you're not used to. Um, if you're really, really scared of being filmed or featured, which is totally a, a normal thing, um, there are ways to have it where your camera isn't on you. I would just say that that requires a little bit more planning to make sure that the visual is engaging. I'm not going to sit in a live stream if I'm not certain what I'm looking at. But if I see that there's a game going on, maybe, maybe you're just filming your hands and you know somehow have your camera above your hands and you're and you're featuring a table and maybe you're showing off your earrings, Ulika, and 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 presenting them to the chat and getting feedback. So I think that there's a way, if you wanted to work with us at the events hub where we could help strategize um, how to do your next live stream, that would be an excellent use of us as a team. If you aren't familiar with who the events hub is because you're new, that is Venture Portland's events department. So we are here to help the district's uh, business associations and their members run events of any kind. I'm going to put our email right now and this is perfect we're in the brainstorming session here's the email and i think right now what i'd like to do is um pause the presentation so that we can actually talk as a group about your specific pages now if you're somebody who has an instagram page and you're like i already am good i feel good please use your insights and your creativity to help uh, answer some other people's questions or um, give feedback because I know that this is, a, some of us have a lot more experience than others. So for instance, like Liz, social media superstar here in the chat is giving some great points and examples, but if you're somebody right now who would love to do an activation, whether it's a giveaway, a live stream or a contest, can you 
if you feel comfortable just talking about your district and maybe and maybe we as a group can say, hey, have you considered doing it like this? Anybody, I was thinking like maybe Midway, Audrey, if you're thinking I'm, you have this great gift guide. So I've been kind of trying to think about like ways to use the gift guide in a game or in an activation. Anybody have any creative ideas? If there is already a pre-made gift guide, um, Audrey made it for the Midway district. So it features a bunch of different businesses, but maybe, like a trivia game where you're trying to answer the right, the like, guess which business this is based off the description. Mm, maybe not. Yeah, I would I would love to do some activations. I think um, our social media has been growing a lot lately and um, I would love to get more like actual activity and interaction. I feel like I would wanna start pretty small, uh, maybe not jump into like the trivia or anything, like sure. just, um, I don't know, put your favorite, like even one of those games you did where it's like, do your first name, last name type of thing, just to get, yeah. break the ice a little bit. Totally. Um, Liz with St. John's I saw is doing, it, it's a photo contest, right? So like you're taking a photo of your sweater, your ugly sweater, and then using a hashtag. Um, and that's similar to a social media game it will still be something the algorithm likes, especially if you're ta if they're tagging the, the St. John's boosters. Um, but, you know, if Audrey is like, yeah, or just breaking the ice, I think that's a good, a good way to frame social media games is like, they don't always have to be about improving sales dramatically, but like, right, just, just, just interacting with the followers and then and thanking the followers for uh, interacting and the gratitude piece is huge. Um, I, I had a question, Gabby, and yes, maybe please. for the general group. Um, are there like seasonalities to these different types of things to do for promotions and giveaways? Like, you know, I saw some people saying like the giveaways right now, this time of year are a little hard because there's so many going on. Do you find like, or for anyone that, you know, has been a little bit more experienced in their districts, like that certain types of social media promotion work better at certain times of year, or is it just kind of really dependent on your district and everything? Anybody want to share what they think before I jump in? Sarah? I've found that with our giveaways, we try and do a giveaway a month for our district and that matching the giveaway item to the season is often the best route. For example, we have a really great fly fishing shop in our district. So we tried to time like when would people want to be fishing? When are the best times to be, go fishing? And then we would do that. Or, you know, like in the in the fall is people want to go out for dinner. There's a lot of great food. So we've done food giveaways in the fall, stuff like that. I mean, it's so hit or miss. You never really know what, what people are going to be excited about. But I do find that as far as seasonal, just trying to match the prize to the season can be really helpful. Anybody else? Ulika? It's more, uh, and I totally uh, agree with Sarah on this. Now, um, not to put this, you know, go off on a different tangent or so, but um, my question is also generally what people think, like our district does that too. We do once a month. Right now we're trying to update a little bit because of the holiday season, but is there some, like our district decide, has decided it's a hundred dollars a month um, to give away. And um, I guess my question is, is it better to just do it a hundred dollars or should we maybe go to 50 or 425? What could be a good, general i mean again the 200 dollars are approved by the board but i think we can mix it up but is there any feedback from anybody thinking you have done it in the district is there some good strategy nana were you gonna say something yeah i was gonna say i think it's great to diversify it you know that way kind of sharing the love with all the businesses 
as many businesses in the district as you can. So if you can do four $25 gift cards, you know, even like for a coffee shop, you know, a $25 gift card for a coffee shop would be great versus like a $100 gift card to a coffee shop. So then you can break it down and really be able to kind of identify different businesses in the, in the district and they can all kind of be able to, you know, be promoted in one way or another. I was also going to say, um, and Gabby, if you can kind of help me with this, um, the hashtags, like I think Williams District, they have the walking Williams and they do, um, Audrey's done some cute little reels with the walking Williams. So like using that tag that you already have that walking Williams and then creating a game out of that, like, can you spot the, you know, what street am I on? Am I on, you know, yeah. Vancouver Street or William Street or something yeah. like that? I think um, Jeff's done a great job using the Christmas tree and like, where's the Christmas tree day? Like those kind of games are really interactive. So I love that you kind of explain those um, creative ideas with um, with the group. And I think that that's really something you can build off of. Yeah, um, I'll say one thing about hashtags and then Liz, I'll have your question, but um, hashtags, I love that you brought them up. The reason why I didn't incorporate them in an activation is because they don't necessarily impact the algorithm as much. For instance, like um, if I clicked on the um, Williams hashtag, it doesn't necessarily register as that interacting with the account or the, the boulder. Um, the difference though, is that it's so good for promotion. Hashtags are going to populate other images using that hashtag. So mm -hmm. you're basically, it's it, these are huge promotional pieces and are definitely related um, to games and activations. I just would say that um, it's hard to it's hard to just do one without the other. Using just the hashtag without um, a way for them to tag the profile is just going to, it's just not gonna communicate the same thing to the algorithm. So it's understanding how the algorithm works and how to communicate with it. Thank you for explaining totally, that. Totally, totally, yes. Um, Liz had a question, maybe not anymore. No, I do, I do. I was just taking my hand down in um, preparation. Totally. I will say one thing about hashtags, you have to have a way to track the entries so we've been running an online contest for like two years now, which is St. John's Bites. And the way it's very easy for them to do, they take a picture of the food or the drink, they hashtag St. John's Bites, and that's how we track it. So we look mm -hmm. under that hashtag and see all mm -hmm. the entries. Now that contest has been going very well for two years and it's easy to do. It's a $50 gift certificate, which goes a long way to Nana's point at, at a coffee shop or a food cart or wherever they're going. Um, it's consistent, it's easy, and it's fun. And our branding has been very consistent. So I will say as an example of an online contest that works, but we're running another one that has like gift basket prizes, which we used to run in person and did very well. But this year has been a much, much harder ask for people to go in and do stuff. So that's the difference I'm noticing. Easy, easy to do, fun, right price point. And for some reason, the gift baskets idea is not, even though it probably has more value than a gift card, it is not appearing to be as valuable as a gift card that they spend themselves, right? And also the whole thing about putting money back into the businesses with a gift card, I think that messaging resonates very well and clearly with the public. So just, just observations on like this year versus last two years kind of thing. Good point. Good point. Um, Liz, I think there is a, a direct question from Heidi to you, but I'm oh. going to have Audrey go ahead and ask their question. I'll answer in the chat. Thank you. Oh, yeah, I was just going to respond kind of to a couple of things, but back to Ulika's question about the um, gift cards. I feel like when I'm like trying to go into that consumer, when I enter giveaways and stuff, which I enter once for Williams, cause I live right by there. Um, uh, I feel like if you have two of something, it makes it feel that much more likely you're going to win. And 50 is still a lot. So like Nana said, maybe diversifying it and saying one week, we're going to have a hundred and that one's going to be big. But then the next month, if you have three of them, people are like, oh yeah, there's not you know, there's 10 people who enter, I have a really good chance of winning something and they're more likely to enter. Um, and also I say for hashtags, I have noticed that I've been gaining a lot of followers from hashtags that maybe like if I use broader ones like Portland Small Business and Midway Business and stuff like that, um, who maybe would never have found me otherwise. So I feel like that can be a really good tool. Absolutely. 
these are all really helpful insights that I think are another reason why webinars are so essential is that it actually allows us to compare and contrast what's working, what's not working. So um, thank you. I have one final piece of advice for running contests and giveaways. Um, one thing that I noticed that improves a giveaway that's not catching on is um, telling people about the competition, you know, mentioning like, hey, this person's posted four times and is our front runner. Uh, or if you're at a goal, you know, like uh, we've reached this point in our goal and we have this much left. Um, those types of things are great visual cues to let people know that this is still something you can participate in or it gets their competition activated and they suddenly really do want to win this $50 gift card because it's, you know, somebody else within their community that they recognize is, is, the, is the person at, at the top. So those, there's so much that's been talked about here. I'd love to take the last five minutes if you want to drop it in the chat, like one thing you're going to tell your district when you get out of here. If it's just live streaming is possible or something basic like that, um, please drop in the chat what you're taking away or if there's something that really made an impact on you. So I know that this was useful. Um, or raise your hand if you like talking, because I also don't necessarily need to uh, sit and read your chats aloud. But um, I also wanted just to say that thank you so much to everybody that has said feedback about their giveaways, because I do think that um, this isn't a science and it is important to realize that uh, trying is better than not trying. Doing something is better than doing nothing. Getting on live stream for a couple minutes, is better than not getting on live stream. So try to be gentle with yourselves and encouraging good efforts because that is what social media is all about is the effort and the pushing of the boulder. So um, yes, thank you so much for um, running a competition with a hashtag post, um, trying online giveaways. Oh, these are such great takeaways. Thank you so much for writing these down and trying live. I'm excited to see some live streams, but um, thank you again. I'll leave you with a couple minutes to spare unless you were finishing writing something, but please have a wonderful rest of your week. And I'm um, looking forward to seeing all the games and activations that are coming my way. So thank you again. Have a wonderful rest of your lunch and day. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Gabby. Oh, thanks, Audrey. Bye-bye. <laughs> And...